moving on and what comes uh, naturally as a corollary to this is that uh, what has been uh, uh, India's diplomatic response in dealing with China uh, by the governments prior to Prime Minister Modi. Okay. Um, I think your question can be extended to say, Okay. how have Prime Ministers from the beginning until the yes. Prime Minister? I have just uh, have, segregated. Have, have handled China. Quite right. And my short answer as always is inadequately and sometimes foolishly. I maintain that because as I look at the history of our dealings with China, I think we've got a rough deal and perhaps our leaders were misled by China and India was not alone. But the fact is we're talking about bilateral ties and it has been almost one-sided in favor of China. Now let's, let me uh, give you the names of the prime ministers who had an imprint on the China policy. And also elaborate on that uh, foolishly part. The foolishly part, I, I will of course, I will of course. Now, the, uh, let's start with the first Prime Minister, Nehru. Um, our China problems began with Nehru, unfortunately did not end with Nehru. And as I mentioned in an earlier uh, episode, it was a major misjudgment by Nehru about China. Now, China was the creation of China in 1949 as an independent country was welcomed by Nehru. He celebrated the emergence of China. Uh, he dreamt of the 20th century being the century of Asia led by India and China hand in hand. And so he was, uh, he was uh, not looking at the objective position, but he was pursuing a dream. Perhaps it was an illusion. It was perhaps an illusion. Yes. And interestingly, the, uh, there was a fierce controversy within Nehru's cabinet on the China policy. When the Chinese uh, proceeded to occupy Tibet and the Dalai Lama and his followers were forced to flee Tibet, take asylum here, the matter naturally was discussed in the cabinet. And it was Sadar Patel, the deputy prime minister, who questioned Nehru's policy on China. For Nehru, the occupation of Tibet by China had little consequence for India. Patel said, no, it has great consequences because the Chinese are now at our doorsteps. They are going to create problems for our territorial integrity and they are going to create trouble in the Northeast. And when you look back, Panditji was wrong, Patel was right. Patel judged the Chinese rightly and events approved it. Now, sadly, Patel died immediately after these exchanges. And Nehru maintained that China was not a threat to India. He said, the threat to India militarily is Pakistan. So he said, trust me, China will never attack India. Famous last words. Yeah. But after Patel passed away, there was nobody of stature to question Nehru's China policy. And of course, the bureaucracy has been trained to follow leadership. And the MEA fell in line. And we had a China policy which sort of lasted until now. And this is what I am going to question. Yes. Whether it has, it has been right for us and whether we need to make some course corrections so far as China is concerned. Now, what is the China policy that MEA framed? I call it a, a policy of expediency. It believed in several principles. One, China is so overwhelmingly powerful that we should do nothing to provoke China. Two, peace on the line of actual control, this is a Chinese term, has to be maintained at any cost and keep on negotiating with China as long as it takes because we have to keep peace with China. Number three, 
China has to be a mixture of opportunity and challenge. And therefore, we can't look at China in black and white. And later on, the description informally was, China was a frenemy. This is an ugly word which is now being used increasingly. Okay. Then, India should aim at higher levels of trade and investment in China because that's good for India. And finally, the uh, India and China have to become global partners and, uh, and keep American hegemony at bay. In other words, the thinking was that India and China together will be a counterbalance to, to the power of the United States and their allies. This is. So these three, uh, these five principles guided us and this was a China policy which I think was pure expediency. And I think it has run its course and it has become almost irrelevant in dealing with China because every single part of this five principles can be questioned. Okay. Now, uh, you asked about how Prime Ministers have handled the China. Uh, before that, these five principles and uh, or the five planks right. of uh, MEA's policy with regard to China. Yes. Uh, do you have some mind as to what was the political basis or which Prime Minister or which government uh, sort of led the MEA to uh, think on these lines? That's the remarkable thing that every Prime Minister from Nehru onwards has followed the same policy. Even till recently, I have senior colleagues who are China experts saying, we did a great deal. This was one of the most successful diplomacies in the world. We kept peace on the border for 50 years, you know. So, great. But this has been at the cost of India. It was China's gain, India's loss. I think this policy which maybe was valid in the beginning. Needs to be questioned Needs now. to be questioned. And this feeling that China is stronger, we are weaker, that I think is a fallacy because we are not talking of China as a, as a state and India as a state and going to war on that. We are talking about uh, protecting our territorial integrity. And I think um, maybe we have not achieved the optimum today. But I think we are quite capable of giving a bloody nose, if it comes to that, in protecting our territorial integrity and our strategic interests in our region. So this argument that they are so strong, we are so weak, and it's getting wider. That gap is getting wider. So this becomes self-serving, that expediency is the only answer to China. And such a view has been held and has been expressed I at a very high level. And, and every Prime Minister has gone along because, frankly, the other factor is it's easy to understand Pakistan because there are people like us. We have been very remote from China. We don't understand their language. We don't understand their thinking process. And so, um, let the experts give us the advice. I'm sorry, it hurts me to say this, but we in the MEA who had, had the expertise actually promoted expediency and didn't plan for this phase that we are facing now. Uh, now, you were coming to different uh, Prime Ministers. Yes, different Prime Ministers. As I said, start with Nehru. Then, after 1962, India and China relations went into uh, a freeze. Yes. And that's why I bring in Rajiv Gandhi, because he made that courageous yes. visit to China not knowing what to expect. And it was that visit that unfroze yes. our relations after 26 years. After 26 years, the Chinese agreed and there was Deng Xiaoping, yes. who had very cordial uh, discussions with Rajiv Gandhi. They agreed that let's come back to normal and create a separate track for the border dispute and we'll reach agreement on that. With that then, that became the new, new framework for looking at China. And after that, after Rajiv Gandhi, other Prime Ministers followed in this, that we have normal relations and we discuss the border. Okay? Next Prime Minister on my list is uh, P. V. Narasimha Rao. 
as I told last time, not, not a, a very decisive personality. Yes. But what he did was, he seriously built up confidence building measures with the Chinese. And he believed that these will work. So 1993 was a very important agreement with China on how to keep peace and tranquility on the line of actual control. That was his contribution to the China policy, that at least we have a framework for negotiating with China and hopefully it will be resolved. And that in some form continued till Galwan. Well, I'm coming to that. After Narasimha Rao was uh, Vajpayee, Vajpayee even went a little further. Because Vajpayee, in, in my view, as I see his China policy, he was a bit Nehruvian in thinking. Okay. The bigger picture man, yes. you know, uh, partnership. Yes. That is his choice. So, uh, Vajpayee started with friendship, said it is good that we are going towards an agreement. And at year 2000, as I had earlier mentioned, uh, President Narayanan was sent on a uh, state visit to yes. Beijing. Very uh, good constructive talks with uh, then President Chiang Chemin. I was there with the President during this visit. And then Vajpayee decided to visit China himself in 2003. And that led to two significant developments. One was yet another agreement on the border. And this was called the political parameters on resolving the border dispute. This was one. And second, Mr. Vajpayee uh, made a gesture that this important, this issue is important enough for us to raise it from the foreign secretary level to a higher political level. So the two countries nominated the new negotiators for China, which was Brajesh uh, uh, Mishra on the uh, Indian side as the NSA and a counterpart from China. Okay. And they also carried on the negotiations on the border. So this is uh, up to Vajpayee. Now, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure I, you would like to hear my yes, assessment at this stage. Yes. Of what has happened, what has happened uh, yeah, during uh, from, prime? From yeah. Nehru to let's say Manmohan Singh. Yes. Okay. What has happened, sadly, is that during this period, China has taken India for a ride. I say this with full responsibility that we were misled. We were seriously misled. And if there is any consolation, India was not the only country that was taken for a ride. Most of the countries that dealt with China have been taken for a ride. And that is the consensus today. So, uh, inadequately dealt with. Yes. Dr. Manmohan Singh was a great Prime Minister. I mean, I have enormous respect for his erudition and so on. And his diplomacy with, uh, with the US was exceptional. But he also tried his hand with China. And in his, in his enthusiasm, he declared a strategic dialogue with China. And I think, personally, it's a cruel joke. A country that is occupying your territory, making further ingress yeah. across the, the border, and we want to have a strategic dialogue, then what is the meaning of strategic? Okay? So, uh, my conclusion is that Chinese have committed aggression, masterfully kept us engaged in negotiations so that we were thinking uh, 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 an agreement is, is, uh, is in the near future and we have come to this stage. But I think when you mentioned Galwan, yes. I think Galwan is for me a turning point. We have seen the true nature of China at Galwan. Galwan is no different from 1962. It is a watershed which should make us fully aware of what the China threat is. What are we up against? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay.